So, today I will be talking about maps and the application of the Pythagorean theorem to them. But more specifically, I'm going to be talking about the Brennan system, aka the Chicago grid system, which was a phenomenal change to the old Chicago address system, which occurred around the time of the famous plan of Chicago from 1909, which was accredited to Burnham. But the Brennan system, which was somewhat considered its companion, but it is cool. It is cool. How the Brennan system works is its rectangular grid system in which every mile has 800 address units, which makes up to be about 220 yards per block, eight blocks in a mile, which is about 200 meters per block. And what this did was it made everything neat and orderly. And such a grid system is perfect example to apply the Pythagorean theorem and basic problems for it. Now, before we begin, I want the audience to realize a couple of things. One, the audience is, you know, not homogenous. We have people that don't even know why they're watching this and know nothing about math or maps or the history of Chicago. But we also have people who are watching this who probably know a lot more than me. So we have you know, all kinds of people watching this. What are you supposed to do? Well, to make life easier for me and to not be out of the realm of the audience who doesn't know as much, we're going to be simplifying things, as in oversimplifying things, as in we're just going to do the basics. And some disclaimers here is that we are going to be acting which none of this is true, we will be acting as if the Earth is completely flat. We will be acting as if uh, topography basically doesn't exist. We will be, once again, a ramification of the fact that we're acting as if it's on a plane is that we will not be using formulas that pertain to the surface of a sphere, which is what a lot of people who are good at maps will use for measuring distances. This is acting as if what you see on the map is exactly how it is. And we're gonna be rounding off numbers and making life extremely easy and extremely, how should I put this, not real. However, for all intents and purposes, the results that we get will be pretty darn close. So let's look at some examples of how you can use the Brennan system, Chicago's address system, to apply the famous thing that a lot of students learn in geometry, the Pythagorean theorem. This is literally took me two minutes to pull out this piece of computer paper, so let's get started here. So in the Brennan system, the origin is Madison Street x-axis, State Street y-axis. This was back in a time when the intersection of State and Madison was considered unbelievably busy. So let's come up with a problem, shall we? And once again, I don't know why I'm even writing this down, but the Pythagorean theorem, by the way, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Most of you guys probably don't even need that. You guys probably already know it. What you guys probably don't know since a lot of the viewers might not be familiar with Chicago at all, is how I'm going to pull out the information for these examples. And even for people in Chicago, they, for the most part, are unfamiliar with how the Brennan system works. So pretty much, I'd say 99% of the people are going to be unfamiliar with the process by which I come up with these numbers. It's unfortunate, but I don't have time to explain it. This is about the math. I'm just applying the map knowledge. For those of you who already know how the brain system works, you will not have a problem with this at all. So, back in the day, 
uh, my grandma used to go to this amusement park in Chicago. It was called Riverview. And it was located around the intersection of Western Avenue and Belma. Now, for those of you who know the Brennan system, Western Avenue is three miles west of State Street, and Belmont is four miles north of Madison. So let's apply that here. By the way, north, south, east, west. And then so we're going to add in our intervals here. This would be three, three miles west. So this would be western. Right, and then one, two, three, four. Four for Belmont. So we make a point here. Now, what's the distance, straight line distance, from approximately the location of Riverview, which doesn't exist anymore, to downtown Chicago, the loop, more specifically at State and Madison? Well, all we have to do is apply Pythagorean Theorem to this. Now, this is why I'm advocating the Brennan system. It's so easy. People in Chicago and people with grid systems don't realize how good they have it. They think that life is so hard and that navigating is so hard that they need to use a GPS. Wrong. We have it easy. We have a grid system. It is so easy to get from point A to point B, aside from the traffic and the you know stupid drivers. But as far as spatial knowledge goes, no one should have a problem, but yet people do. Welcome to this world. There are cities where there is like absolutely no constant setup, no consistent organization. There are a lot of cities with, uh, with a circular pattern to their streets where all the roads ring around the downtown region. There are a lot of cities where it's hodgepodge of everything, but Chicago, nice straight lines for the most part. And the streets that aren't straight lines are actually very good. They're regular streets. So anyway, let's solve this problem. So what we have to do here is apply to that in your theorem. So A and B are the legs. So a leg of length of 4 and length of 3. So according to the Pythagorean Theorem, 4 squared plus 3 squared equals this distance squared. So let's do the math down here. 4 squared plus 3 squared equals c squared. 4 squared is 16. 3 squared is 9 equals c squared. 25 equals c squared. This is awesome because the square root of 25 is plus or minus 5. Distance cannot be negative, obviously. So guess what? 5 equals c. So State Street and Madison is 5 miles away from the intersection of Western Avenue and Belmont Avenue, which is right around where Riverview theme park used to be. Let's try one more example. For those of you who don't know Chicago Bates, he has a cool YouTube channel where he has plush characters uh, from Sonic Universe, Angry Birds Universe, Five Nights at Freddy's, among a bunch of other things. He makes them cross over and compete with each other. Check that out. You should be seeing uh, some of his videos appear on your screen. Once again, that is Chicago Bates. I'm going to use him in this example. Let's say Chicago Bates wants to go out for a run. Let's say he runs for a pretty long time. All right. Let's say he's out in the suburbs. Let's say, I don't know, he's out in, let's say he's in Oak Park, which is a suburb that is to the west of Chicago. Let's say he begins his run at North Avenue and Ann Harlem. And he takes North Avenue East, which is this way. He takes North Avenue East for a mile. And so he makes a right on Ridgeland, goes south on Ridgeland, and takes that down for an astonishing six miles. 
all the way down to Pershing Road in Berwyn. So let's find out that distance, shall we? So for those of you who don't know about the Brennan system, which is basically most of you, Harlem Avenue is nine miles west of State Street. You're kidding me. So that's Harlem, and North Avenue is two miles north of Madison. So his starting point is here. So he goes one mile to the east. So there's one. And then he goes down to Pershing Road, which is four miles south right here. So Pershing, whip north. We have Harlem, and we have Ridgeland. There must be a note here. People who are used to Chicago will not consider this Ridgeland. They will consider this Narragansett because that's what it is called in Chicago. However, I'm talking about a suburban uh, scenario here. And another thing that must be noted is that Oak Park does not follow the Brennan system. They have their own address system. But fortunately, the grid system can still apply because their streets are from the Brennan system. And also, Chicago Bates' endpoint at Pershing and Ridgeland is in Berwyn, which does follow the Brennan system. So we got ourselves a pretty crazy looking triangle, but it's manageable. So we got one squared plus six squared equals c squared. So what distance are we trying to find? Well, we know that Chicago Bates ran seven miles, but how far is his endpoint from his starting point? That's what this is going to find out. One squared is one, six squared is 36, equals c squared. With 37 equals c squared. C ends up being square root of 37. And so the square root of 37 is 6.083 miles. So as we see, there is a difference. Chicago Bates ran 7 miles total, but his starting point to his end point is actually 6.083 miles almost a complete mile shorter. And so these were two problems how the Pythagorean theorem can be applied to maps. In this case, we use the Brennan system, Chicago's grid system. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and read some maps.